This is Stafford Green White Checker. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Stafford Green White Checkered. I'm your host, your Stafford insider, Darren Ayotte, where we're going to be breaking down every Friday night of action for you from Stafford Springs' own Stafford Motor Speedway. We'll have up-to-date recaps for you, point standings, finishing results, interviews, and a heck of a lot more. So let's get started now with our Stafford Headlines of the Week from the Ingersoll Rand midseason stretch. The 6 of Ryan Priest and the 99 of Rowan Pennick went at it again in this week's SK Modified Preach feature. Priest led for most of the feature before Pennick took the lead with an aggressive move to the inside of turn number 4. On the final corner of the final lap, Priest and Pennick made contact, sending the 99 into the grass and the 6 taking the checkered flag. The drama was just beginning there though, and we'll have our official finishing results in the SK Modified feature. The mid-season stretch event offers an extra two laps to each division, and one SK light driver was able to take advantage. DJ Burnham drove his number 54 car to the lead with just one lap to go. And for the first time this season, Stafford saw some rain. Though it appeared to not let up, the rain did stop in time to get the races going at Stafford. Despite Legend Cars and Dare Stock losing their heat events, Stafford was treated to a show in both feature events as the reigning series champs got back into victory lane. So now we'll get started with the recap part of the show, and we'll be starting with a new one this week, the Dare Stock. A little change in the order this week. And most would agree that the key to a championship is oftentimes consistency. Well, points leader Frank Latois Jr. knows a thing or two about that as he brought in a 13-race consecutive streak of top five finishes in the Dare Stock. Latois looked strong all night long in the Dare Stock feature and was up front with one to go, trying to get his second win of the season. So the green is out and we are underway in this Ingersoll Rand 17-lap event. They work their way off turn number four. Frank Latois is the defending champ and the point leader, and he has shown why, as he will take down the impressive victory. But, um, there's so many people i got to thank. My dad, Gil, Roger, my aunt, Sully, my sister, my grandmother here, uh, Zeke's Pump Service, Mr. Casagrande. K&W, Wild Thing Carts, uh, there's so many people, Minuteman Press, Tommy's Tattoo Supplies, you can't forget them, GRP Services, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, we're just trying to be consistent and show up every week, and we got a good car, and, um... Well, that's, first, that's the first win for Frank Latois Jr. since May 22nd. I know that's hard to believe, but it is his second win of the season, a big win for the 33 team. So here are the top 10 now from that 17 lap feature event. Tyler Trott comes up in second, another 1-2 finish between the 33 and the 11 car. Those guys have done that quite a few times this year and that's his 12th top five finish. So Tyler Trott just a few behind Frank Latois. Dan Dembeck finishes in third, so the battle for second position in the standings is going to move by two points once again. Trace Beyer gets a nice bounce back finish in fourth after a 12th place finish last week. Nicole Shambrello gets into the top five in that 16 car. Brian Granger, the rookie, finishes in seventh in the six car, followed by two more rookies. That's Chris Bagnall and Zach Robinson. That was a 13 car field for that 17 lap feature. So here are the updated point standings now after 14 of 23 races. And there are no changes up until the seventh and eighth position where Nicole Shambrello took the spot over Marcello Rufrano, who did not race this past week. But Frank Latois Jr. remains eight points in front of Tyler Trott. Tyler Trott picked up two points on Dan Dembeck, so now Dembeck is 12 behind. Trace Beyer still remains in fourth, has a 20-point cushion to Alex Fern. He's 42 back. And the rookie, Zach Robinson still, Robinson, still hanging in there. He's just 90 points back. Still a lot of racing and a lot to decide in the championship. And rounding out the top 10 in the standings, Paul Borden Jr. and Doug Phelps Jr. have both remained in ninth and 10th position for the last few weeks. So Frank Latois Jr., your defending champion, still out in front, but still a very tight race. Well, it's now time to go to the limited late model feature event. And after two rough weeks in a row, the number nine car of Andrew Hayes, your defending series champion, was looking to make up some serious ground in the point standings. He took the lead early, but had to hold off the charging Justin Bren at the very end. Take a look. <laughs> 
the green flag is out, and it appears that Sirdell and Bloxham are side by side. But the drama is at the front of the field between Andrew Hayes and Justin Brent. Defending champ has done it tonight. Andrew Hayes will take down the win. Andrew Hayes uh, currently runs second place in the point standings. I tell you what, it had to be a good point night for him. Here he is, folks, Andrew Hayes. Coming up out of that number nine car. Give him a hand, and what a good run it was. Ah, uh, it, was, it was a long race there going green for that long, but uh, I got to thank Ingersoll Rand, too. Uh, his Nuntuck Community College, Total Protection Security Systems, On Point Connections, Signorama, Local 3059. All the fans coming out every Friday night to keep this place open and running so we can come out here and beat and bat. So how's that for a turnaround for our defending series champion in the limited late models? Andrew Hayes, back in victory lane where he belongs, as he says. And we'll take a look at the top 10 now from that 22 lap feature event. Justin Bren did end up second behind Andrew Hayes, another podium for him. He's chasing another victory in the limited late models. David Arut, who's climbed up heavily in the standings over the course of the season, he finishes in third. 10th top five for David Arut. Al Saunders in the 04 car loses six points to Andrew Hayes after finishing in the fourth position. And Dwayne Provost, he rounds out the top five with his eighth top five of 2015. RJ Serdell finishes in the seventh spot. Glenn Barkowski comes home in ninth. And rounding out the top 10 was David Como in the eight car. In a 13 car field that saw Cliff Saunders, brother Val, finish in dead last. He went down on pit road on lap 16, had some sort of problem or failure with the car. So he gets a heavy hit in the point standings. And we're gonna show you those point standings now with just nine races to go. And you'll see the hit right away. Cliff Saunders now 84 back of uh, points leader Al Saunders. He's actually tied with Dwayne Provost. So Provost really knocking on the door now to get into that fourth position in the standings. Andrew Hayes though does trim it down a bit to 46 points. It's gonna be very tough. Only 15 drivers in the limited late model. So he can only gain so many points over a certain week. But he is definitely looking to do that. Still 46 behind though. David Arute comfortably in third position, 54 back. And the only change you'll see Justin Bren leapfrogs Austin Bassett. Austin Bassett did not race again this week, so that was an easy position for Justin Bren to overtake in the standings. Paul Arute and David Como round out your top 10 in the standings. Arute trying to move back up after missing a week of action as well. So now we'll get to that Legend Car recap. I know everybody was waiting for it. It's usually the first recap of the show. With the 75 of Corey DiMatteo out of the lineup, defending series champion Dana DiMatteo had a golden opportunity to make it just a two-car race for the championship, that being him and the 43 of Devin O'Connell, who has been strong all year. Meanwhile, from the start of that 22-lot feature, though, O'Connell was low on power and had to settle for a second-to-last place finish. With five laps to go, the 76 car restarted in the third position, but was able to make use of that bump and run move to take the lead. Noah makes his presence known. Here comes Teddy Hodgson, neon orange and white car, as he muscles his way down underneath Brett Crothier. And with no stride, and there is the checker, and Taking down the win is Dana DiMatteo. So definitely didn't have the car to do it tonight, but hey, we made it work. Yeah, Papa's Dodge out of New Britain, FK Rod Ends, uh, Sign Pro, j, j Racing, JMR, uh, Manafort Brothers, Waddell Communications, Jag Tires. Uh, everyone helps us. Back-to-back so -back wins now for Dana DiMatteo, your defending series champion, who made a fantastic move to get the win. So here are the full results from that feature event, and Dana DiMatteo in the 76 will lead them in that top 10. He's now tied for the most wins in the Legend Division with Devin O'Connell, who you see right away, finished in the eighth position, down on power. Only a nine car field once again for the second straight week in the Legend Division, so another division that's gonna have a tough time of points spread because there are so, so few drivers. For example, Devin O'Connell did not lose as many points today or excuse me, last night, as he may have lost in, say, the SK Light or the SK Modifieds. Noah Corner, he gets his best finish of the season. He led a lot of laps, but unfortunately was passed by the 76 car down the stretch. Another good run, though, for that 31 team. They are knocking on the door to get that first win of 2015. Andrew Muller and Teddy Hodgden are your third and fourth place drivers with Brett Crowther getting another top five. 
Mikey Flynn in the 24 car spun out on the final lap. He was running in the top five before that, so he comes home in seventh position. And Ryan DeCandia in the 68 car completes your nine car field for that feature event. So now we'll update your point standings for the race for the Legend Car Division Championship. And Dana DiMatteo pulls to within 16 points. This is the closest it's been since the beginning of the season. So this is going to be very interesting now in the next couple of weeks. The pressure will finally be back on that 43 car. Can they make it another big time win next week and another big finish for them? We'll have to find out. Corey DiMatteo, though, drops substantially. He's 72 back now because he missed this week for the feature event. And that allows Teddy Hodgden to move within just 40 points of him. So we'll see what happens there over the next couple weeks. If Corey DiMatteo is back next week, we'll have to find out. Mikey Flynn, though, remains in the fifth spot, as does Andrew Muller in sixth. Noah Corner, though, picks up a position over Jerry Macchia into the seventh spot. And rounding out the top ten is the 32 car of Kyle Rogers. So it's now time for the SK Light feature recap. And Joey Farina would spin on lap seven with Bob Charland in a battle for the lead. This was the perfect opportunity for one DJ Burnham in the 54 car. The extra two laps gave Burnham a fighting chance for the win as he worked his way up through the field. Here they come, back up through the gears, green and racing, down into turn number two, and it's side by side at the point, but not for long. Here comes T.J. Burnham, the point leader. This would be a very big victory. David Burnham came, he saw, he conquered, he earned the win, he will take down the victory. This car was a rocket ship tonight. We were a little nervous it wasn't that fast in practice, but I had to thank her and me, my girlfriend Jackie, my mom, my grandma. One of our old sponsors, Jim Alvajanis, lost his mom this week, so uh, this one's for him. We gotta thank uh, Ingersoll Rand, Napa, all the fans at Stafford Motor Speedway, uh, Manili is Bruce Manili. Without him, we wouldn't be here. Uh, Salon Roush, Ricky from R and R, Rad for the awesome power, Mike from Magnus. Um, everybody. A calm and collected DJ Burnham gets another impressive win in the SK Light feature. So let's now show you the top ten from that feature event, and you'll see that Joey Farino, your points that are coming in, obviously had some some struggles with that spin early in the race, but he does rebound for a top five, his seventh top five of the season. Steven Kopchik was leading with two laps to go before he got moved over by the 54 of DJ Burnham, and he'll finish in the fourth position. Vinny Anglais, how about that? First podium of the season for Vinny. We talked to him after the race. Certainly a sign of things to come, he's hoping, with that 95 team. Nick Salva's back on the podium. He finished in second in that 98 car. He was up front for most of the race as well, battling with Burnham and Kopchik. Daniel Wesson finishes in sixth with Kyle Jetty in seventh. Tony Membrino, we haven't mentioned him today. He finishes in the eighth position in that 44 car, so he loses a little bit of ground in the standings. Peyton Henry, Jeff Beaujolais, they round out the top 10 in a 17 car field. So now the championship standings with nine races to go in the SK Lights. And DJ Burnham in front by 12 points over Joey Perino, with Steven Kopchik just 18 back. And you'll see Tony Membrino Jr. did pick up a position despite finishing in the 8th spot. That's because Jeff Beaujolais finished in the 10th spot, so there was only a 4 point difference there. Bob Sherland in 6th position in the standings, 58 back. And then you get into the, uh, the triple digits, so Daniel Wesson 110 back, Peyton Henry 144 back. But they both climb a position in the standings because Glenn Griswold had a tough outing. And Wesley Prucker, of course, in the 22 rounds at your top 10 in the standings, 152 back. But still, six cars, just 58 points, the differential. So it's time for the ever so popular SK Modified feature recap. Ryan Priest was aiming to make it three straight wins, but the 99 of Rome Pennock, who was looking to get back in victory lane once again this season, took the lead with just a few laps to go. Priest then made a bit of a contact with the 99 car, sending him into the grass. Priest crossed the line first, but would he be declared the winner? Or would he be penalized for rough driving? Let's find out.
And who is going to be doing the barking early? Maybe Todd Owen trying to get the early lead away from Tyler Hines. Here is Pettick trying to put some separation between himself and the six car. Ronnie Williams is on his way into third place. Off turn number four. Priest taps to the back bumper. Pettick goes around. Priest comes back to the stripe as your leader. And we have just found out, perhaps, Yes. because the 59 goes to the number one spot on the scoreboard. What a turn of events, especially considering that you had a bit of an incident on the first lap, had trouble turning the car, and you're able to fight your way back, and eventually you end up here in Napa Victory Lane. This is a great thing for our team, and uh, I can't thank them enough for all they do. We didn't, we don't, we never give up, and uh, it's amazing. Uh, I like to thank Advice One, Tick Free Organic, Tick Control, Stosh, my grandpa. I know he's been having a hard time, and uh, we're gonna be bringing him there. Uh, my spotter, Steve, Rick. Uh, my girlfriend, Pigeon, Mikey, uh, Tony from TA, Napa, Talon, uh, Will, Will Gaspar, Cody, uh, my dad. And so Ronnie Williams gets the win. Can you believe that? What a finish to that SK Modified feature. A tough break for Priest, but what a win for Williams. If there was ever a team that needed a win so desperately, it was that 59 team right there. So how about that? So now let's give you the results from that 42 live feature. Keith Rocco gets another podium, his second place finish there in the 88 car. Of course, that's after Ryan Priest gets penalized four spots for rough driving. So Priest ends up in the fifth position. Still gets his 10th top five of the season though. So not as hard of a hit as we may have expected as far as penalized goes. Matt Galco though gets his third third place finish of the season. He's just on the doorstep to getting a win. Rome Pennick, of course, spun on the final turn, so he was officially marked in the fourth position. So he actually gains two points on Ryan Priest after all that. And you'll see one spot underneath Ryan Priest. Mike Christopher Jr., the rookie, gets his best finish of the season just outside the top five. So how about that? Your former legend car driver over the Waterford Speed Bowl, 25 wins last year. He comes all the way to the SK Modifieds finishes in the sixth spot in this race, a big race for the 82 team. Jeremy Sorrell, your defending SK Light champion, the rookie, finishes in the seventh position. And another rookie, Tyler Hines, comes home in ninth. And rounding out the top 10 was the 81 of Todd Owen in a 17 car field that saw Joey Cipriano take a heavy hit in the standings with a 16th place finish, and Ted Christopher take another hit as well. Another finish outside the top 15 for your defending series champion, Ted Christopher. Really not accustomed to seeing that out of that 13 car, but I'm sure he was happy to see his nephew, Mike Christopher Jr., finish in the sixth position. That was, once again, a 17 car field for that SK Modified feature. So here are the official standings for the SK Modifieds. And you'll see Rowan Pennick still picked up two points on Priest, so he's eight points ahead of him now. Keith Rocco, 40 back, and then you'll see Matt Galco passes Eric Burnt for the fourth position. So he is only 92 points back and in the fourth spot. Todd Owen remains in the sixth position, followed by Ronnie Williams who gets the big move, a plus three in the standings. Remember, he was as far back as almost in the out of the top 20 in the standings after his struggles. He was about 17th position in the standings. So to think about where he has been to where he is now, seventh in the standings, certainly have to give our respects to the 59 team for working as hard as they did and trying to turn things around. And it really all started with that Napa Auto Parts SK5K not long ago. Joey Cipriano loses a position to eighth position. Michael Jarvis Jr. and Justin Bonsignor, all three lost spots in the standings as a result of Ronnie Williams' uh, victory. So those three guys did not have a good week, but Ronnie Williams, Matt Galco, Rowan Pennick, they certainly did. So it's on to the final recap of the show, and that's the late model feature. After some unfortunate endings to some races this year, the four car of Tom Butler would have a major turnaround to his 2015 season. He took the lead on the first lap of the feature event and went untouched to Napa Victory Lane. Take a look. As Fern has now moved into the top seven, and he just zip lines his way around Michael Ray in car number 42. Tommy Butler is on his way. Tommy Butler has worked hard. He deserves the win. He heads off turn number four.
Tommy Butler has done it back in winning style here at Stafford. Down to the winner's circle, a very happy Tom Butler. It's crazy. Uh, it, this never gets old. I mean, the guys that never get a chance to do this, I feel bad for them. This, I mean, like a, I'm like a kid here. I've been doing this so long, but, but I hope this is the first of some more. I mean, these guys are running good. Great power, great chassis. Great Finally. First win of the season for Tom Butler in that four car. The persistence has paid off. That's his first late model feature win since 2009. Goes to show you how bad he wanted that race. And don't forget, he led 27 laps in a feature event earlier this year before accidental contact and finishing in the fourth position, which Tom Fern ended up winning that race. So this one was definitely a rejuvenating feeling for that number four car. So here are the top 10 finishers from that feature event. It was a 32 lap feature event. Michael Bennett, your points leader, gets that two race win streak snapped, but he does finish second, so no harm, no foul there. Kevin Gambacorda gets his 10th top five in third place, still winless though. I'm wondering when we're gonna see that 32 car back in victory lane. Tom Firm, we just mentioned him, he gets his eighth top five of the season in fourth. Rick Lanigan comes home in fifth, a good run for those guys. How about Ed Ricard in the 77 car? He finishes in the seventh spot. Michael Scorzelli and Scott Cook finish 8th and ninth, And rookie Michael Ray, who's had an up and down season, but still a top 10 in this feature event. A 13 car field for the late model feature. So here are the points now. Nine races to go. Still a lot to the side. But Michael Bennett remains in front. 36 points up to Kevin Gambacorda, who passes Josh Wood. That's because Josh Wood finished in the 6th position. Kevin Gambacorda finished in the 3rd spot. So 6 points gained there for Gambacorda. But that's the only movement as far as uh, positioning goes. Tom Butler, though, sneaks down to just 48 back. Tom Fern is 100 back in the sixth spot. And from there on out, it's a little bit of a ways out for Scorzelli, Ray, Heyman, and Scott. Scott Cook, 252 back, 228 for Rich Heyman in the 28 car. But still a solid day all in all for Tom Butler, now just 48 back and in contention for that late model championship. So we will now end the show with another new segment here on Stafford Green White Checkered, and this segment is called Chasing History. Tom Butler did not only get his first win of 2015, but he also got his 24th career late model victory. That now puts Butler fourth on the all-time wins list in the late model division. You can see who he is chasing, some of the greats of the late model division over the years. Ryan Pasoko, 45 wins overall. He is your all-time leader. Woody Pickhat, of course, Stafford Springs own in second position with 39 wins. But you'll see Tom Butler just passed Chuck Zentarski for fourth all time. And you'll notice another Tom down there in, in seventh position, that's Tom Fern. So Tom Fern's got 21 career victories, so he's not far off either, getting up there in the late model all time wins list. But Tom Butler, if he can get just seven more wins in his late model career, he'll move into sole possession of third place on the all time list in the late model division. A very nice accomplishment for the four car of Tom Butler with his 24th career late model feature victory. So that's gonna do it now for this edition of Stafford Green White Checkered. And for our producer Antonio Squiteri and on behalf of the entire crew here at Nutmeg Television, I am your host, your Stafford insider, Darren Ayotte, and we'll see you next week on Stafford Green White Checkered. <laughs>